Of course, Talk TV. Peter Hitchens is here with us. Uh, we must touch upon uh, Roald Dahl and uh, uh, the story that's erupted over the weekend. Puffin books, apparently. I didn't even know they were still going. Um, mm. Have decided in their uh, wisdom to hire sensitivity editors who have now started editing his work. What do you make of that? Well, it's the revolution that's happened, and people, the the, the conservative media are full of people saying how terrible this is. Mm. But actually, the the doctoring and altering of children's books has been going on since at least the 1980s. Has it? Oh yeah, the, the, the changing them to, to be to, to be more and more friendly to the modern the, the modern ideology. Right. So for instance you have many many more children's books in which the, the, the family portrayed is a one parent family uh, and all kinds of things like that have mm. been going for a very long time. And right. the, I, 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 it, it's, it's completely unsurprising to me that it's now reached Roald Dahl, but it's struck people's attention because he's a very famous author and lots of people read him. I don't actually like Roald Dahl's books very much. My kids are always like them. Some of them. And some of the films have kind of, I suppose, yeah, put him in, in more of a famous th place, haven't There they? is a tinge of anti-Semitism in quite a lot of them, which mm. I don't think is deniable, honestly, and he himself has, was on the record as saying things which, which rather backs that up. But that's, uh, that's not, for me, a concern for, for having them censored or also that this is obviously wrong. If an author writes something, it should be left as it stands. I mean, how on earth mm. we, would, we would... Well, why you would tamper with it is, is beyond me, but also... Well, because, it, because, it is, because we now live under, uh, under what is effectively a marshmallow totalitarianism. There are things you can no longer say. Uh, we sitting in this room can no longer say certain things that, that we might have said perfectly, uh, perfectly readily 30 years ago, mm. and 10 years from now it will be even more so. And this is the way it goes. And there is no actual effective protest against it. You can point it out, but you you go into the shops in six months' time, you'll find the doctored books, and you'll find it harder and harder. Mm to locate the ones which haven't been changed. And this is not just Roald Dahl that is happening to it's, it's a It's a general uh, coordination of everything in the same direction, so that a, a certain series of ideas have to be expressed, cannot be attacked, even by implication, mm. in, in, and it will extend into adult literature in time. It's, it's already... Yeah, I'm sure, already it, I'm in, sure in it has extended... Newspapers. I'm sure it has extended into, into sort of commissioning the kinds oh, of commissioning, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the people who, 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 who might have got things readily commissioned 30 years ago now, unless they, unless they correct their thinking, mm. uh, or indeed unless they're the right kind of person, they won't go public. No. And I mean, one of the arguments for the sensitivity police being brought in is that Roald Dahl wasn't a very nice man. Uh, know, but that's almost... not an argument for sensitivity police. No, that's an argument for, 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 for parents saying, yeah, sure, read this, but look, see this in here. Uh, th this is the kind of things this this this, this man has said and the way he's mm. said them, and and be wary of it and know that it happens because it does it happens yes. everywhere and that's 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 an intelligent approach to it, but banning it, changing it, censoring it, mm. altering the words of the actual author so that they're not his own, yeah. uh, that is a crime against truth. Well, it's a bit like the people who say, oh, you know, some of these artists were really rather ghastly people and horrible individuals and that we shouldn't enjoy looking at their paintings. Well, I'm sorry, I don't think that's got anything to do with it. The Absolutely two things are entirely it, separate, no. uh, aren't they? Well, I suppose there are points. I think the, if, if you had someone who was an actual Nazi, yes, uh, then you might have some difficulty in, 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 in treating their, their well, art. Well, Hitler himself was a painter. Not a very good one. Not for, a very good fortunately one. Fortunately for, for, and for not all very many people, we don't would. have to say, I'm, I'm not hanging this wonderful Hitler landscape. <laughs> yeah, because get it out Nazi. of the National This is a gallery. dreadful painting, so you don't need to worry yeah, about it. Yeah, but I mean, even with you saying that, I'm slightly uncomfortable because, you know, um, if you judge somebody to be politically... I'm not talking about somebody who's murdered people, but I mean, if, if you're talking about somebody being politically distasteful, should that prevent them from being artistically, you know, sort of rewarded? I think there are, as in... There's, there's Where no, does it start? There's, there's no clear answer, because sometimes people are so ghastly mm. uh, that, you, that you have... I bet, for instance, you take the, um, the, the problem of Eric Gill, uh, a horrible paedophile. Yes. I, his personal life is absolutely revolting, and yet a, 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 a brilliant sculpture. Sculptor. Yes. So and one of his one of his works is outside the BBC, is it not? Which somebody climbed up and tried to smash. They still up. they still haven't taken it down, have they? And they get criticised for that on a regular yeah, basis. But it should, I, it, should they? Do you think? No, I think I think these things should stand. But I'm perfectly happy for people to put plaques underneath saying the man himself mm. was, was. But the the work, 
I don't think anybody can seriously mm. argue that it was uh, that, 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 it, that it was bad. Yeah. And there is a problem for us all if, if, if bad people can produce good works of art. But as, as I say, he didn't go around um, cramming people into concentration camps and murdering them, which no. is, if, if he had, I think the temptation to say we can't put this up and then might you get into these stronger. ridiculous conversations with people about whether you know what he did was as bad and all of that. But I've got some good news for you. Uh, there is in fact a list of content contentious statues. Uh, provided by uh, Scotland Yard. It's said to be uh, a secret list. The study by Policy Exchange has discovered that um, William Winston Churchill, Horatio Nelson, Earl Mountbatten and Oliver Cromwell are on the list, as well as the Cenotaph. Yeah. So um, I don't know whether we can expect to see scaffolding or boxes being put around, that sort of thing, because they did that across the road here at uh, Guy's Hospital. They actually put a wooden sort of modesty curtain around the statue. Was that because of a threatened demonstration? No, it was no. because of the fact that the statue was causing such offence to the um, the people who were going in and out of the hospital, and particularly the uh, NHS staff who thought that he might have had some connection to slavery, even though he founded, was an anthrop was, was a, um, founded the hospital, not only Guy's, yeah. but also St Thomas's. Thing Thomas about, Guy. The thing about the slavery issue is that so many people of importance uh, could, could in some way be said to be connected by it in, the, in the, the, the previous era, that it's almost a way of obliterating or diminishing everybody from that era. I mean, so I think, I think Handel had some shares in, mm. a, in an outfit. That was, but, so, so are we never going to have any performances of the Messiah again? Mm. Are we going to say that his music is, is, is not... Is not I'm sure it will come to that. Well, I think part of the reason for the choice of slavery, and I think slavery was such a dreadful thing that I can see why people get worked up about it, but I don't... And, and one does need to, to, to in, in some way, say, well, this, it, it is wrong that we became so rich on the back of it, which, is, which it is. But I think it's, it's not used for that purpose. It's used for the purpose of making everything in the past we can't accept mm. bad and getting a wave of support behind the sort of change which we now see in the rewriting of Roald Dahl, and no doubt there'll be the re rewriting of Charles Dickens and Shakespeare and everybody else before too long, not just in, in a minor way, but in such a way that you will not be able easily to obtain no. the unaltered versions. And That's surely what's soon, coming. Surely soon there will there'll be a change of name for St Thomas's and Guy's Hospital, uh, because you wouldn't want to be in any way associated with a philanthropist who had actually created a hospital for the poor, which is what he did. Well, possibly, and of course, the other thing is that so many things in this country are named after Christian things. Saint hospitals named mm. after after saints, railway stations named after saints, sit towns, and the whole Christian uh, nature of the, the names of places is going to come under challenge soon mm. too, as well. It, it's it, which is what happens in revolutionary countries, because most revolutions happen sort of overnight or in a matter of weeks. Yeah. It happens fast, but our revolutions happened over a matter of decades. So it happens slowly, but it is gathering speed at the moment. And lots of well, things which people thought will never happen will yeah, happen now. And it's an interesting way to look at how, you know, the authorities see things, because the reason for this particular list of Scotland Yard's um, contentious statues is because they're saying that basically they've noticed, because they have data to prove that there are more demonstrations now around these statues than there ever were. So that would be alone a reason to single them out for removal. Well, it's also a reason for the police to be on guard to make sure that they protect them if they're attacked. Mm. And they're, they're, so I, the, the, not necessarily wrong for the police to be on guard against this. But removal uh, is, is, is an obliteration of the past. Obliteration of the past mm. is actually fundamentally an obliteration of the truth. But also and, to, and to be guarded against. But to identify the cenotaph as a contentious statue, to me, is, is wrong. I can't... I mean, I, How I can it be contentious just because a bunch of trots don't like it? I'd be interested to see what the argument is, but there, there will be one. No, there'll be, there there will will be it one. will be there around will be the number who, of, of incidents who, that have happened around it. Who believe this, I can't, since it is, an, what Sonotaf means is empty tomb, and mm. since it doesn't represent anything other than national grief, I can't see it. But this is the problem, I'm not, you know, we don't think like the revolutionaries. Mm. Uh, they have different ideas about what is and, and, and is not good. So I'd be very interested to hear what it is they mm. have against the commemoration of the, well, it might the, be something the selfless to, deaths of millions. Might be something for you to look into for yeah. the weekend. Uh, Peter Hitchens, thank you very much indeed.